Hey everybody, Nick with VMX here, and uh, just time for another Photoshop tutorial. Um, I understand you guys really enjoyed my first Photoshop tutorial, and I'm, I'm glad, so I decided to do another one. Today what I'm going to do is I'm going to work with a couple of textures, and I'm going to show you how to take a texture, cut a shape out of it, and then give it the illusion of depth using um, just a couple of tools, and in one case, a, um, a couple of filters, but we're really not going to go crazy with the filters. I am, this is my practice space. It's a thousand pixels by a thousand pixels that I'm going to be working with just to show you um, what I'm doing. Well, let me show you the three textures that I'm going to be working with. This is a high def stone texture. Actually, this is the small version, so it's not really high def, but um, I created this as being really high def and then scaled it down to a manageable size um, to work with. I created this many months ago, and I've used it a couple of times, um, so it's just a sort of a weird, rocky texture with sort of an interesting color to it. Uh, this is a wood texture that, uh, let me get rid of that there, a wood texture that I created many, many months ago as well, and I've used this so many times I've lost count. Let me zoom in to 100%. And finally, this is a brushed metal texture that I just whipped up just now. Um, I haven't ever used it. I just whipped this up just to show you something really cool that you can do with it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start with the we're going to start with the wood actually. Now um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut a piece out of the wood, and to do that the first thing I'm going to do is zoom out so I can see the entire uh, thing at once. So there's a couple of ways you can control the zoom. I like to use Control and minus to zoom out and Control and plus to zoom in. Um, if you don't like using keyboard shortcuts, you can find them under the view menu here. So you zoom in, zoom out, and fit on screen. Uh, fit on screen is control zero, which is useful. Um, so I'm just going to take the rectangular marquee tool. All of the marquee tools are right here. Uh, there's the rectangular one, the elliptical one, the single row, and the single column. You want the rectangular one. So if you don't see it, if you see it there, you can just hit M on your keyboard or just click on it. If you don't see it there, just right click. Like if you see the circle one, you can just right click and select that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click and drag and I'm going to get a, a piece all the way across here. Um, this is just an example wood texture that I created and I'm really, uh, you know, let me get it over from, from down here actually where it's uh, a little cleaner. Um, just for the example in this case. You could use any wood texture. You can create one, you can download one, you can take a picture of wood, you know, um, whatever you want to do. And I'm going to copy this. Uh, you can hit Control C to copy, or if you have more than one active layers and you want to see the thing is, if you use Control C and the document is made up of a whole lot of active layers, it'll only select the layer that you have active. So in that case, you could hit Control and Shift and C, or you can just go to Edit and hit um, Copy Merged. But um, try to use Copy Merge when it is available. But if it's not, Control C for copy is fine. I'm going to click over to my practice space. I'm going to paste it. You do control V or paste uh, from the edit menu. And um, I'm actually going to duplicate it. So um, the reason I'm going to duplicate it is for before and after. Now here I have my layer right here with the with the piece of wood. And to duplicate it, there's a couple of different ways you can do that. You can right click on it and hit uh, duplicate layer. Or you can do it from the layers menu here. It's right there. Or the keyboard shortcut, the way I prefer to work, is control J. So you could just do that. Now I'm going to use the move tool, which is the very first tool here, to move one of them to the side so we can have a nice before and after. And I'm going to zoom in a little bit, not a whole lot. And we're going to start working on the lower one, which is layer two. The uh, layer two copy is going to be the, um, the original. I'm also going to show you how to rename layers here just real quick, just to avoid confusion when you're working with a whole lot of layers. If you right click and you hit layer properties, you can just type any layer here. So I'm going to call this one wood altered, or, or actually we'll call it wood after. And then just right click on this one, layer properties, wood before. So we have a before and after. So let's select the after layer and start working on it. Now the tool that we're going to use, there's actually two tools that we're going to use a lot, and they're the burn tool and the dodge tool. The burn tool is right here. And uh, if you don't see it, just right click. The dodge tool looks like a black lollipop. Uh, I'm not quite sure what the deal is with that, but that's what it is. The burn tool looks like a hand. And there's this also a sponge tool there. I'm not going to be using the sponge tool, but that's where it is. Um, so if you have the one you need active, you can shortcut to it by pressing O on your keyboard. Or you just click on it. 
If you don't see it, just right click and select your burn tool. Now the burn tool kind of works similar to the brush tool or the eraser tool. So you have all these options up here. Um, for brush size, I got it at 44. That's actually pretty good. You, there's no specific brush size that you should use for everything. It, it's based on the shape of what you need. We're going to be brushing along the edges, so this is a pretty good size for what I need. Um, what is important, though, and what always should be, is that the hardness should be at 0%, meaning it's a nice soft brush. For the range, you have three different things to choose from. You have shadows, midtones, and highlights. Uh, we're going to be using all three of them, but we're going to start with the midtones. Burning the midtones means you're going to be burning the average brightness parts of your uh, of your canvas. The highlights are the brighter portions, and the shadows are the darker portions. Exposure works kind of similar to opacity. It's at 56, which is pretty high. So I'm going to lower it to about 20. Um, 21 is fine. Uh, make sure that protect tones is selected. You could actually you could do it at 100, but I like to work in increments because you get more subtlety and it's easier to work that way. So I prefer lowering the opacity, especially when working on the midtones, which is the bulk of it. Um, so what you're going to want to do the technique. Uh, here's what it looks like when I do it, just real quick. You know, I, I do it fast. But what I'm basically doing is I'll click and drag along the edge, and then I'll move up in this case further towards the edge click drag move further towards the edge click drag and the reason that you do that you, you're going over it several times but you're moving out towards the edge as you do it is because you want the edges to be more burned than the middle portion we're only doing the edges but the um, the very very edge should be nearly as close to black as you can get it so I'll just move along and do this. Now you'll notice that there are some portions that are not darkening. Those are the highlights, so don't worry about them. You can go over a million times and they're never going to darken. So we'll worry about the highlights in a minute. I'm doing it to the bottom now, same technique. Um, and use your discretion. If there's parts that are already kind of dark, you, you don't have to go over them as much as you would go over portions that are very bright. The portions that are very bright are going to be mostly highlights anyway, so you you know, you're not going to have too much of an effect on them. So if you're brushing and brushing and it's not giving you an effect, then uh, don't worry about it. You just switch to highlights. Now already you can see uh, the before picture looks like a flat piece of plywood, uh, plywood like say a 2 by 4 while this already has, it looks like it has rounded edges. But we can make it look way better. First let's get rid of those yellow specks. Those are the highlights. So we're going to switch the range to highlights. And I'm going to up the exposure because this can take forever. Uh, 60 to 70, 66 is fine. And just go over them a couple of times. It's not going to affect anything but the highlights. So don't worry about going over it a whole bunch of times. And just dull out the highlights that are near the edges of what you're doing, your shape. Don't worry about the middle. We're not working with the middle right now. So just obviously the brighter the highlights are, the more work you have to do which is why, um, and it takes a while because they are bright, that's why I upped the exposure. If I was doing this at 20%, it would be taking a lot longer. So that's why I upped it a lot. Don't worry if you if you go over the middle a little bit, it's not a big deal. Um, so okay, it already looks a lot better. It pretty much has the same roundness that it did before, but now it, uh, it looks a lot cleaner. So now to uh, the finishing touch on the edges is gonna be the shadows. And for this, uh, about half is good. And the thing is, you're only going to want to go along the very, very edge. So to do this, if you're working with something that is a, a different shape, that it's not straight like this, it might take you know um, more of a subtle touch. So you might want to zoom in, use a smaller brush, and go very slowly. But in this case, since it's a horizontal line, it's a very easy way to brush over it without worrying about... Um, screwing up. So just place the um, the circle reticule so that just the bottom tip of it is overlapping and then you're going to you're going to right click, hold the right click down and then you're also going to hold shift on your keyboard. And what this is going to do is you're going to go back and forth and it doesn't matter where your mouse goes. Your mouse um, can go anywhere, but the reticule will only move horizontally now, not vertically. So you can just go crazy like this. See? And it's not, you can move up and down, but it's not actually going to do anything. So that's pretty a pretty cool technique. Uh, do the same to the other edge. You only want to do the very edge with your shadows. 
Okay, so that looks really cool, but um, the last portion is we're going to use the dodge tool. So right click here and switch to the dodge tool. Now notice the dodge tool, it, it is a completely different tool, so your um, everything here is going to be different. Um, I like to use a smaller brush. Actually, this is a really good size at 31 because you're only going to be brushing along the middle um, and you're only going to be doing mid-tones. Don't worry about the shadows or the highlights. Um, if you wind up dodging the uh, shadows, it's actually going to start to look flat again in the middle and you don't want that. And if you do the highlights, it's going to get way, way too bright. Um, keep your exposure pretty low, 17%. Yeah, that you know, work in increments here. You don't want to do it too much. It's better to do it too little than too much, because if you do it too little, you can just go over it again and just dodge the uh, the sections in the middle here. Don't go too crazy, but there you have it. We're done. So here we have um, the before, which looks like a flat piece of wood, and the after, which looks like a rounded wooden rod, like it was carved in a in a cylinder. And this is something... Like this could be uh, part of a support beam. Um, if you add a, if you were to add a texture to it, a different texture, like instead of um, being a cut wood texture, if it was bark, it could be a tree or a telephone pole, or if it was any other texture, anything that you could do a rounded cylinder, you know, or you could do a tree or, or whatever. Um, this could be a banister. Um, so really, that's just one example. Let, let's uh, work on the stone one. So I'm actually going to hide these layers in my practice area. And I'm going to go over to the stone. Now, what I'm going to create out of this is going to be, I'm going to show you how to make the spikes that you see in, um, in caves, which are called stalactites and stalagmites. I personally always get confused about which are which. One of them hang down, the others come up from the ground. It doesn't matter because you just flip them over and you have the other one. Now, to get the shape of that, since uh, we only have you know, simple shapes for our marquee tool, we're going to use the lasso tool. And there's actually three lasso tools. Uh, the regular lasso tool, the polygonal lasso tool, and the magnetic lasso tool. I don't really use the magnetic one. The polygonal one is if you want to just say click, and then you have a line that you can drag, and then you click again, and then you have another line. And if you would just use that to roughly cut out the shape of a spike, and then you just double click when you're done, and there'll be a selection. But I'm actually going to use the regular lasso tool, and in that one you just draw, and you get that. Because stalactites and stalagmites are not really too uniform; they uh, they don't look perfect. So um, so just draw like whatever shape you want. In this case, I'm going to do this spike here. That's not really what I want. I want to do like more like this. There we go. And then as soon as you let go of the mouse, it's going to give you your selection. Um, go ahead and copy it or copy merged and let's go to our practice space and we're going to paste it and you could either duplicate it or just paste it again to get another layer um, I actually prefer to duplicate it so it says copy and I'm going to use the move tool to move the copy over actually move it over here oh, I'm at the edge of the document I didn't realize that let me move them over okay so uh, let's rename them. We'll call this one Stone After, and, and we'll call uh, not, and we'll call this one Stone Before. So let's work on the After one. It's the one on the left, um, and you're gonna basically do the same exact thing now. Um, so get your Burn tool out. Um, switch to Midtones. Get your exposure where you want it to be. Now, in the case of something that's pointed like this, you want the very tip to be the, the part that's the most burnt. And just keep in mind, if you're, if you're not like good at this right away, just work slower. You might want to zoom in, use a smaller brush. But um, for something thick like this, you actually want to start further in towards the middle. And for thin parts, you really don't want to touch the middle at all. So keep that in mind, so you can give it a nice rounded feel. Now you can see the highlights are really sticking out, so let me just work on that in a second. Let's get done with the mid-tones here. Okay, that's already looking really cool, but um, let me go ahead and uh, switch over to highlights. I'm going to up my exposure. 
and I'm going to go over the highlights here so that just around the edges remember to dull them out because you don't want those bright highlights around the the, uh, the edges otherwise it doesn't look right there we go just keep clicking keep clicking and dragging okay see that's already looking like a huge improvement and then the shadows and uh, remember you gotta be very careful about this you're only doing the very edge there's no trick to it when it's an odd shape like this. It's just you gotta have a, a good mouse hand. So um, if you wanna zoom in and do it carefully or, or lower the exposure to do it incrementally, you can do that. There's really nothing I can tell you other than practice this, you know? Maybe the very edge. There's actually a little bit of highlight that got overlooked over there, so let me just go over that a few times. Okay, so that looks really cool. Let's see, get the dodge tool out and uh, do the middle. Remember, more in the very center than in the edges. And there you have it. Uh, let me actually zoom out. Actually, no, this is at 100%. I'm not going to zoom out. But um, what I'm going to show you is first I'm going to merge these two. Well, I'm going to merge these two into one. So I'm going to take the after and just hold control and click on the before so you got both layers active and I'm going to merge them. You could right click and hit merge layers or you can go to layer and you could hit merge layers or you could hit control E and then to make it small I'm going to scale them down so the way to do that is to do the free transform and you can hit control T is the keyboard shortcut or you can go to edit and then hit free transform and to keep, the, um, to keep them the same aspect ratio you're going to uh, hold shift as you drag it down. So there we go. Like that. And there you go. So there's my stalactite or stalagma. I'm just going to move it over there. Um, if you want to flip it over, you can bring up the free transform, right click and hit flip vertical. And now they're hanging. And uh, what's cool about this is um, what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to get my eraser tool here. And well, that's a huge eraser tool. Let me lower that there. And I'm going to erase the uh, the before one because I want to show you something. I'm going to duplicate this layer a couple of times. So I'm going to hold control and hit JJJ. And if you pick each copy and use the move tool, you could uh, just move them slightly to, um, and you could, if you want one to be behind the other, um, you just move it down to be behind or move them up to be in front. So let me move that down and then just move it over. See, and uh, you could eat, you could use the free transform in each one to make them, you know, long and thin, short and fat, um, so that they could look different. You can uh, flip them horizontally so that they face a different direction. So that that's you know, you could really uh, have a lot of fun with this. And if you want to create like a whole lot of them, that you know, like that, another way you can do it is to hold Control and select all of these, and then Control E to merge them together, and then Control J to duplicate that and then use your move tool like that move it down like that and look at that see so you can hang them from the ceiling you can have them coming up from the ground or whatever but that's uh that's how you create a stalactite or stalagmites with a simple texture and giving them that rounded edge that makes them look like they're actually um three-dimensional you could use this in an ice texture and make icicles also, it's, it's really limitless what you can do with this. So I'm going to show you one more. Let me hide these, and we're going to go over to our metal texture. Now what I'm going to do here is, let me zoom out. I'm going to create kind of a metal ball, like a ball bearing, or maybe a pinball from a pinball machine, and give it a nice glint, like there's light shining on the front of it. And it's, going to, it's really easy to do. It looks like when you see the finished product, it looks like something that's very complicated and difficult to do, but it's very easy. So the first thing I'm going to want to do is make a circular selection. So for that, we need the elliptical marquee tool, which is under the same heading as the rectangular one. So just right click and select elliptical marquee tool. Now you can create ellipses with this, but we want a perfect circle. So hold shift as you drag and you'll get a perfect circle. Now, before we even, we can just do this, but the thing is this actually has a grain to it. And no matter how much we burn the edges and dodge the center, it's still going to look flat because uh, we want it to look spherical. We want that grain to look like it's curving around a sphere. So there's actually a filter we're going to use. So once you have the selection, uh, hit on your filters menu here, 
and then go to distort and spherize and you're going to get this dialogue here. The amounts you're going to want to uh, just leave it at 100%. If it's not at 100%, bring it up to 100%. And the mode should be normal. Just hit OK. And then it, it looks pretty cool now, but we're going to go one step further. So go ahead and do it again. You're going to go to Filter, and then you're going to go to um, Distort, and then Spherize. And this time make the amount 50. So hit OK. And anytime you want something to look like a ball or a globe, um, just select, the, select it with your... Uh, elliptical marquee tool and do spherize twice once at a hundred percent and once at fifty percent it's gonna look great so now we can copy it or copy merge go to our practice space and let's paste it control V or you can go to edit paste and let me zoom out here that's very big actually let me uh, actually even let me just scale it down like the way I showed you edit transform free transform rather hold shift and scale it down Okay, hit enter. I'm going to duplicate it, the layer with control J so we have a before and after. Let's move this one over. Uh, we'll make this one our after. So we're going to do um, ball after. And this one here, ball before. So let's work on the after. Okay, so same technique, except we're going to go a little bit further with this one to give it a little bit extra. Uh, so let's get the burn tool out. Uh, Exposure is about at 60 and just start burning the uh, edges there. Careful, yeah. you don't want to go too crazy. And since this is going to have a strong light shining on it, we're only doing the very, very edges. So make it nice and uniform, like that, okay. And then dull out any highlights. Oh, that was highlights. I wonder it looked weird, okay. I was wondering, it's not burning as much as it should, all right. Well, my highlight's already dulled. There we go, that's better. That's me not paying attention. Let me lower that exposure and kind of go over here a little. Okay. I'm only at 14% here, so. You know, I'm not, I'm not liking the way that came out, actually, because I screwed it up, so I'm going to just delete that and just copy from the before. And that's the great thing about having an unedited copy of it is that you can just copy it and go again. All right, so let me do this. Okay, I wasn't following my own advice. I was going too fast. So we're going to burn the midtones first. The exposure to about, yeah, 25. All right, yeah, I was wondering why that was looking so weird. That's more like it. That's, what, that's the look you want. Remember, only the edges and more around the very edge than, you know, not the very edge. Now I'm going to have light hitting the front of the ball from the upper left hand corner. And I'll show you what that means in a second. But you still want the very edges to be burned out to give it that rounded look. Now let's switch to highlights and just dull out those highlights. So I've got to up that a lot to dull those out. Okay. And the shadows, remember the very edge with the shadows. Because you want the very edge to be as close to black as possible. Okay, now I'm going to go to midtones and you're going to create like a circle right here in the lower right hand. Because if the light's hitting the upper, the front of the ball on the upper left, you want the front of the ball on the lower right to be darkened. So we're going to make like a circle here and just keep going over it like that. And, uh, Dull out the highlights. Don't do anything about the uh, shadows. Okay, that looks really cool. Now, uh, what you want to do, you might want to go like a, over the edge very lightly there like that so that it doesn't look too jarring. And then, uh, yeah, like that. Okay, now what you're going to do is you're going to do the dodge tool and uh, keep it in mid-tones, and you're going to want to go over everywhere except that circle area that I just created a couple of times. Don't do it too uniform, because you want it to look a little glossy. Okay, there we go. And then we're going to switch to highlights, and we're going to create a circle right here. And uh, just not too big, and there you go, you have a nice bright spot. Now let's say you want to give it like a nice glint. Uh, you could actually add a lens flare to do that. I'm going to show you how to do that. You go to filter, render, 
lens flare and uh, just move, you can actually move your lens flare to the very center of the bright portion and then select 105 millimeter prime and the brightness is going to depend on the size of your object but you want to lower it definitely. You want to give it just a hint of the glint. There you go, you have a nice little glint coming off of it there. So there we have a pretty cool, like it could be a pinball, it could be like a ball bearing. Um, you could do that with any texture. Um, if it's shiny, you would do that glint thing and, and the highlights and everything. If it's not, you would not do that. But it really depends on what kind of texture you're working with. But that's how you use the burn tool and the dodge tool to create the illusion of depth in objects that you have cut out of textures. So um, just wanted to show you guys that in a Photoshop tutorial. I hope you enjoyed it, and I'll see you in the future with perhaps some more tutorials.